here. So this is just a very quick cheat sheet just to show you some of the available geoms that there are and how you can use them. Uh, in the beginning, when I was learning ggplot2, I used this a lot. It was very, very helpful and very useful. So I just wanted to make you aware. And we're not going to spend too much time on it. I just wanted to make that reference. OK, so let's see. Let me just see if everyone was able to join us. Yeah, OK, everyone has a video on. Everyone's in the room. Perfect. Let's keep keep going then. George, would you like to start recording again? I began recording when you were showing your cheat sheet, so that that will be in the oh. recording as well. Perfect, perfect, thank you. Okay, so right now we're gonna step into, um, into the yield editor um, analysis. But before we do that, I wanna show you something that for me made a huge, huge difference in how I work with R in my workflow, which is using R Studio projects. And I'm gonna make put some em emphasis on this because we're gonna be using projects from this point on. Anytime, so, we just finished now the intro, which is important for you to understand how things work and some of the history of R. Uh, but I will be showing you my personal workflow for any analysis I do that I think it's super, and not just me. I mean, I learned this from other people, right? I did not invent this, but it's the one that I use that I think is very, very helpful for anything really uh, that, that you do with an analysis, statistical analysis, which is to use R Studio projects. Um, let me just um, change. Are you guys still seeing my screen? Like my 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 desktop at this point. Do this. Or uh, are you are you guys seeing my folder zero four class code? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. So I just wanna show you how I structure on my side, the folder structure for this course. So I have an overall folder that I'm calling 2022 Spring Advanced Topics in PA. Inside of this folder, I have whatever I download uh, from GitHub. And then I have some extra material. You will, your side will definitely look different for sure. The point of what, that I want to make is whatever if you don't have yet a main folder for this course on your computer, please go ahead and create one on your desktop. We're gonna need that structure. If you do not have, if you already have a folder for this course, I wanna ask you that every time that you get updates from GitHub, you just paste that folder, that GitHub folder inside of the course folder in case you're not doing that yet. If you are, perfect. So let's say I wanna ask you to go into the main folder of this course, whatever that is on your computer. And I want, wanna ask you to create um, a folder like, like this. So like 2022, I mean, it could, it could really be any name, but I'm just proposing here like 2022 advanced PA dash and then your initials. I have LMB for my initials and then I have test. You don't have to have the test there. So let's say, you know, if I were to create one right now, which I am, would be 2022 advanced PA dash LMB. So this folder here that I just created is gonna be the one that we're gonna be using throughout this course. So if you download new material from GitHub, it's gonna be a different folder that you will copy and paste those files into your personal folder that we just created with your initials now. Does that make sense? Okay, so you just created, I'm assuming that you are at the level of your main folder for this course, you created a subfolder with your initials that's gonna be your files, things that you're gonna do and share with me. So I wanna invite you to go inside of your personal folder. So the, with your, with the one with your initials, go inside there. And here we're gonna create three subfolders. They're gonna be, the first one called data. The second one is gonna be called code. And the third one is gonna be called output. Let me increase my font size here. Okay, so um, 
this is where, so I'm just gonna go get outside of the folder so you see again my structure that I, that I would like you to have a similar one. So on the main folder of the course, you have a folder with your initials there, like 2022 advanced BA initials. You go inside of that, inside of that folder, you would have three subfolders, a code, data, and output. Okay, do you guys have that? Perfect. If you don't have it, let me know. We can wait a second here. It's important that you have this set up correctly. It's not difficult, but I just wanna make sure that we all have this right. Okay, I'll take that as everyone has it correctly. So, not, so this is not our studio in action yet. This is just the structure that we create that our studio projects can benefit from when we're organizing files in any analysis. So now, um, if you just wanna go on your computer and launch our studio, it doesn't have to be specific, it does not need to be anything like any script specific, it can just be our studio by itself. If you're seeing our studio, that's enough. I wanna call your attention here to the top right where it says project none. This is what you are probably seeing. Meaning that this, what, what we're seeing here is does not belong to any specific project. If we come on the files folder, you will likely see it somewhere like George was showing on his side that his was like, I don't know, maybe on his documents folder or even higher up than that. Uh, in my case, it's showing here more specifically, but that doesn't happen all the times when you're not using projects. So let's create a project. To do that, I wanna ask you to click on this project button here. And then you say new project. If it's asking you to save, um, you can just say save. And then it should prompt you to this window. We're gonna choose existing directory. And then it shows a path here. What I want you to do is to click on browse. And I want you to browse, let me just take the zoom. I want you to browse to wherever that, that folder with your initials was. So in my case, oh, not here. It was Google Drive. Well, oh, oh, that's interesting. No, oh, sorry, I'm, okay, here we go. So in my case, so this is the folder of uh, the entire course. This is the one with my initials. So you want to be at this level, at the one like at the folder with your initials where you can see the code data and outputs. You do not want to go inside code data or outputs. And then you, whenever you're at that level, at the one with your initials, you click open. And then create project. Some magic happens. And before I walk you through what happened here, I just want to stop and ask, were you guys able to do this? A quick way of knowing if that worked is if you go back to that folder with your initials, you should now see this new icon there that is the dot rproj file. You should be seeing this at the same level as code data and output. Span is nodding yes. Victoria, we're able. Okay. Guys on uh, on on Zoom, everybody at this level. Okay, perfect. This is perfect. Now let's um, let me just quickly tell you here why our studio is important, or sorry, why our studio projects is important. So now we basically created a project that, if you go on files now, is going to be focused and centered on the files that are at that main folder where you save the project. In this case, code, data, and output. Right now, those folders don't have anything, uh, but if you were Let's say if you had another, so we haven't developed this project yet, but if we, I want, just want, want to quickly show you here another project that I have. So something cool is that if you, if you have multiple projects, you can, or they're going to show up here and you can quickly switch from one to the other very quickly. I'm just going to open another one that I have here just to show you how that will look like. Um, so it just opened another studio window with code that I, so you don't have this code and you're not supposed to have it. It's just something that, um, you know, from a different project, but basically showing you that you, you basically shift your entire focus from one analysis, analysis to the other. 
And instead of having a very cluttered data folder in your experimental files, you actually organize things by analysis. So I want to close this, just coming back to our current project. And here's what I want to ask you to do next. Let's move some of those files that I share with you to our project files. Um, if you, I want to show you a quick, quick trick here. So this R button, so when you're on the files tab, this R button is always going to bring you to this main folder of the project. So if I go inside a different folder and want to go back there, I just hit here. So click there, and then here on the more, you can um, show folder in new window. It's going to basically show this folder in your Explorer, files explorer, right? So this is the folder of the project. What I want to ask you guys now is to go to the GitHub folder where I where I did share the files, and we're going to copy those two data sets from that GitHub folder into the project's data folder. So let's do that first. I'm going to step out of the project folder. So that's the project folder. Here's the, the GitHub folder. I want to come here. And on data, we have that GeoJSON and that CSV. I'm just going to copy them. Go outside of the GitHub folder go inside the project folder and I want to go inside the data folder and paste them. Paste two items. Sorry, I know this can be a little bit confusing and like going back and forth, but it's going to make sense in a second here. Okay, so now let's do the same. So get outside of our project, go into the GitHub folder, go into class code and copy that wrangling yield partial rmd that's the code part so i just went into the github went into class code copied that second script now i'm going back to my project with my initials going inside code folder and pasting that script Okay, so just to show you again, at this point, if you are able to follow, you should have one file inside your code folder, and you should have two files into your data folder, and this is all inside of your project folder, which has your initials. What is the file that's in the code folder? Yeah, so uh, the file in the code folder, so I went to where I downloaded things from GitHub. And I went into class code, and then it's that second .rmd file. Yeah. Was everybody able to to get this? So get to this level where we have one code file into the code folder and two data files into the data folder in our project. If I show you my my R Studio now for this project, so notice how now. It doesn't say project none. It says the name of the project. If I go here on files and I browse, there's going to be a code file. That code file is going to be there. Those data files are going to be there. Okay, so I'm taking this as a yes, and I'm going to move on out to actually start coding. So you. Yeah, have yeah, if you don't mind, um, I would like to just take five minutes to show all the students where these data came from, um, because I think you know we've got sort of mixed backgrounds here, and, and some may have no idea how these data were collected. Is that okay? Absolutely. Do you want to show something on your screen? Yeah. If you don't mind, stop sharing. I'll, I'll show something on my. I'll share my screen. Yeah. Um, so uh, the first thing I want to show you. is uh, where these data came from physically. So the field we'll be working with is this field here. Uh, we have spent many years uh, collecting data from this field. Um, this photograph is actually a nice coincidence because it shows cotton in this field. Let's see what data was collected uh, in uh, November of 2019. And you actually see defoliated cotton. So the sort of whitish looking stuff is the 
the white cotton bowls that um, are now be able to view, but pay attention to all these areas where you see a lot of erosion taking place. Uh, this little wetland area here, these will be uh, some of the things Dr. Bassas will focus on as we move through it. In terms of general context, this field is in Miller County in Southwest Georgia and near the town of Cockwood. So uh, very close to Alabama. Alabama is just over here somewhere. Um, the other thing I want to show you very quickly is how these data were physically collected. So um, we're talking about cotton yield data. Uh, they were collected with a machine that looks like this. Okay, so the cotton is harvested by this machine. Um, I'm not going to show you this little video. You can go to YouTube and see how a cotton picker works. But this is from the CRSS 3030 PowerPoint file. So you can go and watch this video under yield under the yield monitoring file name. Um, it's processed through the machine and ends up at these big round bales of lint and seed that uh, later go to the gin to be uh, processed. Um, the machines uh, were equipped with a John Deere a cotton yield monitor. So here you can see um, the GPS system on the front of the cab. The actual sensors themselves are located behind these ducts. So what happens is as the cotton flows into the machine, um, the, the, the lint and the seed together are pulled off and then blown up by air up through these ducts and they're collected in this basket here, and then they're compressed and packed into this, what is called a round bale, okay? And uh, the way the sensor works, this is what the sensors look like. They're on the backside of the ducts. Um, they emit microwave energy. So remember back to our conversation about the electromagnetic spectrum, they emit microwave energy, and uh, the, the energy passes through the duct and the cotton that's flowing up into the basket, uh, and a portion of the energy is absorbed by the cotton and a portion is reflected back. And what we're measuring is the amount of microwave energy that's reflected back. And that is calibrated uh, based on the mass of the cotton that's weighed later um, to give you a calibration equation between mass and microwave reflection. And that's how we record data for uh, these microwave sensors in John Deere work. So the data we'll be working with now were collected using these instruments here, okay? Any questions about that? Okay, so if you have any questions about um, what these uh, data look like, uh, how they were collected, you can contact me and we can uh, explain a little bit further. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, George, that, that, that re that's really gonna Going to help to understand the data and and some of the some of the data points we're going to be filtering out. That's going to be very very useful. Okay, let me start sharing mine again. Okay, so you should be seeing your R Studio. Um, if you're not, if you go on Files tab and you're not seeing this, click on that R. Is what's going to take you here. Once you are on the main part. Of the files of this project go inside code and just click on this new file here um, that we have there i'm just going to squeeze here and i just want to quickly tell you what this is so our scripts is what we used up until now um it's how people we start learning r it is probably not how people use our program the most what people use mostly is something that is called R Markdown. is a type of file. It's the, the file that we're seeing right here. And why is R Markdown so useful? Much more than R script. R Markdown combines code, comments, and output all in the same file as if you were writing that on a Word file. So you, if you can see here, uh, let me introduce you to a chunk. So on my screen, this is how the chunk looks like as far as colors. You know it is a chunk because it start, starts with like three apostrophes and then this curly bracket R. This is what, a, so a basic chunk, let me just create one quickly. This is a basic chunk. A, you can think of a chunk as the actual console of R. So this is where magic happens also. And this is where R is going, going to interpret things for you. Outside of the chunk, so whenever you're not in between these here, 
and probably you're going to have a different background color of the chunk as well so you know visually when you are outside the chunk you can write normally you can write comments without needing to add the hashtag if you do write comments inside the chunk yes you need hashtag because that's kind of the console however if you're writing outside the chunk you can just write norm as you would normally also something nice that it does is if the chunk produces an output which we're going to see here in a second like a table or a graph you're going to see that output right below the chunk so you can actually browse through like pieces of comment code and output consecutively you're not going to be seeing your plots here on the right tab anymore it's going to be inside your code um, also something useful is if you are not seeing this index on the side look for this button here if you're not seeing uh it's, if you click on that button it's going to pop out so this uh is basically the table of contents of this script and it is for our case our script is not i mean it is like 400 rows of code if you look on the side but i have some data scripts for some analysis that have like 2000 rows so imagine you just like trying to get somewhere in your code just by scrolling up and down that's a pain so this helps you to navigate your file um, by looking at these things and before we start here i just want to show you so here on the on the table of contents you're seeing the headings so when you're outside the chunk one hashtag is actually meaning heading one like you do in, in word heading one two three so one hashtag is a heading one two hashtags is heading two and so on and you can see how they start appearing at those different levels on your table of contents so this is just for your own knowledge here and on the table of contents we're seeing the headings and we're also seeing the chunks so we, if we go on this chunk here we see that we're right there on our file on the setup if you are not if you're only seeing the headings if you're not seeing the chunks the chunk names so let's say if you're not seeing reading data because that's only a chunk name i want to show you how to turn that on so you can actually see that so to do that, um, we're gonna go here on tools. Just uh, on tools, global options, and then you go R Markdown. Uh, you want to select so right here. You want to select show in document outline sections and name chunks. This is what you want to have. And then you just click apply. So again, I went on. Let me just close this and just show you again from the beginning. So I went to um, to tools, global options, R markdown on the basic tab here. Show in document outline sections and name chunks. If you can do that, that would be awesome. And then click apply. And you should be seeing the outline like that. Everybody good up until here? Good. Everybody on Zoom good? Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going. Okay, so uh, I just for for so now we start, we're officially starting the yield your cleaning uh, exercise and i just want to tell you what i want you to get from this so we're going to quickly discuss here why is eo monitor data important in the, in the first place uh and why do we need to clean it like what causes issue what causes errors and why we need to care about them also uh we're going to import spatial data into r as we're going to do with the uh, eo monitor data that is a spatial data we're going to do some data wrangling steps, which is basically manipulating the data for it to be in the right format for us to use for analysis. Then we're going to do some cleaning steps uh, and then compare, like I showed you that plot, we're going to compare the raw map with a clean map and see um, what we gather from it. 
So I'm just gonna, you're not gonna have to create the chunks. I have already created all the chunks. So I'm just deleting the one that I just created there. Normally in my analysis, I like to have a setup chunk where all the packages that I need, I already placed them right there. If you want, you can just place your cursor and hit run like we were doing. However, you can also just hit that play button that's gonna basically run all the lines of code inside that chunk. So if I just hit play, you see that green progress line going on the side here. And then it basically runs, um, it finishes running. You know, on my uh, screen, I have um, a, a message that says I don't have two pack two packages installed and it's giving me a prompt to install them. So specifically, K-N-I-T-R and Patchwork. And I imagine some of the other students are probably seeing the same thing. Yes, uh, you can just say yes, install. Yeah, I, I, yeah. We're, I had in, in the plans here to install them like lower down the script, but if it's already prompting you to do that now, you can do it. Um, if, you, if it's not prompting you to do yet, that's okay. Cause we're gonna, we're gonna use them. We're gonna do that lower in the script. Well, we, we can just wait then. I just want to make sure that we're required right now. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But we we should we should be good to just wait. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> if you click that play button, um, perhaps you get some messages here. Perhaps not. But as as long as you have those packages, it should it should be fine. And if you don't have, it's gonna throw you an error when we get to use functions that need those packages. So you will be notified by R if something is wrong. Well, okay. I get an error message saying that one of those packages I mentioned is not available. Yeah, yeah. If that if that was the only error you got, then uh, uh, that's okay because we're gonna install them later. Yeah, so uh, that, that pack, and I just wanna tell you, uh, that's the NIT R package. Um, maybe you will need that one and I didn't anticipate this. So my apologies for that. So if you wanna go ahead and even like on this first chunk here, if you just wanna say install dot packages and then NIT R and you, and you wanna run that, um, you, we can do that. And if you get an error, you can just say no. Hey, uh, Dr. Bastos. Yeah. I'm not sure what I did wrong, but my screen looks nothing like yours. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to share? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, uh. <laughs> okay, let me see. I think you have the HTML version for some reason. Can you just open your code folder so we can see what's in there? Interesting. Huh. Um, can you can you go to your to the GitHub folder that you downloaded so we can see what's in it? Like on your on your computer. Mm. What do you mean? Okay, so uh, maybe yeah, yeah. if you if you um, if you didn't download that, what we can do is uh, we can just go ahead and download. Uh, okay, so maybe if you go in class code, yeah. So I think what happened is so you're gonna have to download things from GitHub again. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I uploaded this script last last night. Um. Yeah, so I, I, I can show you that here quickly. If you wanna go back on your browser and then you go on the 2022 add VPA. So at, the, at that level, you're gonna see, can you just expand to the side maybe? Yeah. So on that code, download zip. Mm -hmm. And then you wanna open that zip. Okay, let's see. I've got two screens. Uh, yeah, and then uh, you go on class code for class code. And then you copy that RMD, yeah, the second file, you copy that from there and you paste. Oh. It. 
Yeah, you're going to, I think you're going to have to browse like outside of our studio to that folder. You know? Um, I think it pulled it up. Um, wait. Yeah, but the thing is, you have to move it to the right folder. That's that's the thing. Okay. For, for other things to work, like when we're importing data. Mm -hmm. So if you can just uh, go back to your folders, to that view. Uh, so like if you just, yeah, so if you go back, Let's go. Yeah, you can copy that. And I'll go to your your projects folder, which I don't know if, if it is that one. Maybe, yeah, so the TRB one. Yeah, so on code, exactly. You can just delete what you have right now there so you don't get confused. And then, yeah, move in that one. Perfect, yeah. So now um, if you go on our studio, Let's just, um, to make sure, yeah, you, you can say yes. Mm -hmm. And then here on the right, and, and you can, let's see. Yeah, you can say yes. Too. On the right here, yeah, you can just click on that and that will launch. Yep, you got it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no worries. As, as, um, Anyone else having issues or? On the SF? Yes. Okay, I, I can try to help you after class. I don't think we're gonna be using SF to the point that we're gonna to cover today. So I can help you afterwards if that's okay. All right. So let me start sharing again. And okay. So again, uh, you you can just hit that play button. You can install knit R now because maybe that's because that that that's kind of needed to compile this R markdown file. And if you were able to do all that, let's just start by importing our yield data. So I already left there the name of the object that I want to have, which is yield 17. And it is 17 because that was the year that was collected. So as you guys know, are you guys ready to start programming? Okay. So you just use the assign um, symbol and then you do read underscore CSV. So this function here is gonna read a CSV file and that's, and we, we chose read CSV because that's how our, our EO data is. That's the, the format. So if you go on data, you see that it's a CSV. So right here, go inside of the, of the parentheses, open and close quotation marks and hit tab. So what's gonna happen is this probably. It's just gonna fill in for you the only file in that folder. What's happening is when we hit tab, R is seen as, as inside the code folder. And because it only has one file, it's giving you that file. What we wanna do is get outside of the code folder and go inside the data folder. To get outside of a folder, you do dot dot forward slash. If you hit tab now, you should be at the main level of the project. And then you just browse to data, hit tab again, and it's gonna give you the option because now we have two files. So select the KB2 EO 2017 CSV. So if you were able to set up your projects and folders and subfolders and copy and paste things in the right place, this should work. If you're not seeing what I'm seeing, probably something happened on the way. Uh, please let me know. I we will have to figure this out for you to be able to follow along. And I will be super glad to help you because this is important. So if you're not seeing this, let me know. If you are seeing, we can just hit the play button and you're gonna, if this worked, you're gonna see yield here in our, our environment. And also because I left yield 17 here on the chunk, it has already printed um, that whatever was in that file for us here in R. Can you please repeat the steps to bring the file into the, the yield statement there because I, I'm not having success. Yeah, yeah, let, let's do that. So this is how we started. So we do the assign uh, symbol, and then we use the function read 
underscore CSV. When your cursor is in between the parentheses, you open and close quotation marks. And then you do dot dot forward slash to get outside of the code folder. And if you hit tab, you should see now the main directory or the main directory of your project. You go on data, hit tab again, and it should show you the two files in that folder. And then you just select the CSV one. Oh, it, what's happening is I'm selecting the file, but it's not showing up uh, at, there where you, after data uh, um, slash, it's, um, even if I hit tab, it's not showing up there. Mm, perhaps. Physically, when you select it, are you just going over to the right and hitting the, the name of the file or are you checking it well so when i hit so uh let me just go back here so if i'm at this level and i hit tab yeah uh, then i yeah just use the up and down arrow and just hit enter on the one that i want oh, okay so yeah okay got it thank you awesome awesome okay uh has anyone else had issues with that okay so if you just run this it's going to first import this data set and is gonna save that on an object called yield 17. And then because I left yield 17 there is gonna to print to us whatever was inside this data. Let me just decrease my phone size so we can see the whole thing. So what it's showing here is basically, it's telling us that this data set has like over 31,000 rows, 18 columns, and it's showing us some of the columns and some of the rows here in right below that chunk, right? So we see it has FID, it has region, heading, elevation, distance. So if you click on that arrow, it's gonna take you to the next page of columns. Um, Let's so check to see if everyone has that because I got an error. Um, do, do you spend the work? Anyone else having error seeing this? Would you like to share your screen, George? Yeah, I seem to be the person that has all the problems today. <laughs> I think my wife thinks that happens all the time. <laughs> that, that's completely normal. Okay, so here we are. Okay, so that's very, very interesting. I Because I don't think you're doing anything wrong is can can you just run that chunk again so no, it's not working too it just reset the whole window and just not opening fire it worked okay so you got it now george uh do you want to share i mean i didn't do anything except run it a second time <laughs> yeah okay so that's good so you just try and run it again do you want to show us jenny's your screen Okay, so can you uh, like open and close parentheses there? Mm -hmm. Forward slash, and then hit tab. Ah, no matches. That is quite interesting. Okay, so I, I think I know what's going on. Um, I see like, if I'm looking at your files tab, I see you have this rexercise.rproj. That's the name of that project. But on the top of your screen where you have the project, the current project name is the 2022 ad, ad PA GG. So those are different project files that got created. So what I would tell you is you would have to actually um, launch that other project file that you're seeing there, the rexercise.rproj, and that's the one that's going to have your your uh, folder set up correctly, if that makes sense. So if you if you want, you can just go ahead and close our studio. 
you're not going to be losing anything and you can save if you want <clears throat> and then go on that folder where you have yeah and then open the r exercise r proj Mm -hmm. So now, uh, when you do the quote, open and close quotation marks, now we should we should see the right path because it is the R project saved at the root of your project. Yeah, so on top there, yep. Mm -hmm. So dot dot forward slash. Huh, this is crazy. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Um, let's do this. I, I really, I really want to help you here to get this right. But for some reason, the project is is showing project none, which is kind of weird, because you did click on the R exercise R proj on your folder, right? Maybe you should try um, opening the project from R Studio. Yeah, we could, we could try that. If you go where you see project none um, on the right, well, but I don't, yeah, I don't see that R exercise R proj option there. It's kind of interesting. So why, um, so the class goes until 11.10, right? So we have like one minute, let's do this. If it's okay, I mean, Janice, would it be okay if you stay like? Because I, I guess we can we can we can we can stop, um, and just really make sure everybody has things going right before we start working. Because this is going to be important for you to follow along. So we can just stop here, um, and then whoever is having issues, if you could stay for a couple moments, I can help you, and then make sure the next Monday or sorry next this coming Friday, we have everybody good to go.